The Pixel 9 Pro Fold is my favorite new foldable phone and it's all about the way it looks and feels. It looks like a normal phone, it feels thin and not bulky and it's incredibly fun, whether I keep it open or closed. The AI features are powerful, maybe even too powerful and the huge inner screen is the best canvas for the Pixel Studio image generator or the reimagined photo editing. It falls short of the flat Pixel 9 Pro in many ways but it makes up the difference when you open up the tablet hidden in your phone. The ideal portable phone is a magic trick you can show your friends. Look at my phone, it looks totally normal, but wait, and then you'll surprise them by pulling a tablet out of your head. The Google Pixel 9 Pro Fold is the first foldable that nails the trick. Some others have come close, but the Pixel 9 Pro Fold gives you more on the outside and it turns out that equals more on the inside as well. The front display on the Pixel 9 Pro Fold is the same as the one on the Pixel 9, no more and no less, it isn't close but a bit similar as on the OnePlus Open. It definitely isn't slim to fit as on the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 6. It's perfect, it's incredibly bright and colorful and except for the slightly larger bezel on the hinge side, the Pixel 9 Pro Fold looks exactly like a normal phone. Open the phone and you get the largest screen ever hidden inside a foldable phone or any phone. Really, at a full 8 inches, you actually get more screen space from the new Pixel 4 than you would from an 8.3 inch iPad mini since the iPad is narrower. Hidden is the name of the game since the Pixel 9 Pro Fold is the slimmest foldable phone you can buy. It's only 10.5mm thick when closed, which is less than 2mm thicker than the Galaxy 24 Ultra. So that's the pitch for the Pixel 9 Pro Fold. It's a normal Pixel on the outside and an iPad mini on the inside. Frankly, if Apple had built this phone, we would and the conversation right here because you would be convinced to buy one no matter what it costs. The Pixel 9 Pro Fold is loaded with AI features and this might be the best phone for having fun with Google's AI. Sure, you can magic edit and reimagine photos on a Pixel 9 Pro but on the Pro Fold, you get the biggest screen possible and it makes a huge difference when you are selecting parts of your pics to change. Unfortunately, there just isn't much else to do with the unique screen options. Don't get me wrong, everything looks great when you see it in on the inner display. Games are fantastic and it's fun that top tier games like Disney's Speedstorm have special modes just for foldable phones to give you a different view when you bend the screen. But where's the rest? The Pixel 9 Pro Fold is too expensive to just be a phone and a mini tablet. It needs to be more than the sum of its parts. It needs to offer more unique experiences that take advantage of the dual screen design and the foldable inner screen. I am hoping to see a lot more from the Pixel 9 Pro Fold in the years to come. Like the rest of the Pixel 9 family, the Pixel 9 Pro Fold gets 7 years of Android updates, security patches and Pixel feature drops. I am hoping that we are just seeing the beginning of what Google can do with multiple displays because today the Pro Fold holds too much missed potential. The Google Pixel 9 Pro Fold costs $1799 US dollar and I wouldn't expect the price to drop precipitously the way the price of the original Pixel Fold did. That phone was a disappointment and Google was motivated to sell it cheaper. You can no longer buy the Pixel Fold which is highly unusual these days. The old phone generally sticks around to be the cheaper model but the Pixel Fold is gone and good riddance. Google's new foldables feels so much more advanced than its last one that I can't imagine its price will come down quickly. The materials feel very premium. This is the thinnest foldable you can buy in the US at least and thin doesn't come cheap. Neither does durability and Google says this phone is much more durable than before. It looks and feels exponentially nicer than the last Pixel Fold. Still, is $1799 US dollar too much? Like I said, if Apple made this phone, there would be no question that people would buy it. I have seen a lot of folks comparing the Google Pixel 9 to Apple's phones, saying it's the most fun and refined Android design to compete with the dynamic island iPhone.
The Pixel 9 Pro Fold is one of the nicest looking foldable phones I have seen with the best combination of hardware and software and no disappointments hidden in crevices. If you bought a Google Pixel 9 for $1799 US dollar and an iPad mini 2021 for $499 US dollar and the only thing you would lose is the ability to keep both in your pocket at the same time. The Pixel 9 Pro Fold might be the best foldable phone I have used. It's definitely the best design. I am still not sure it justifies the high price. The Pixel 9 Pro Fold is a weird huge push of premium and basic parts. It has Google's latest Tensor G4 chipset paired with a whooping 16GB of RAM premium like the Pixel 9 Pro Fold. The outer display too is basic as the Pixel 9 and it can't match the brightness or the LTPO versatility of the Pixel 9 Pro's panel. The inner display is top-notch. It uses LTPO tech for a variable refresh rate of 1 to 120Hz and it can hit brightness levels up to 2700 nits but it isn't the sharpest display around. The OnePlus Open gives you more pixels per inch and it has a large bezel by today's standards. The cameras offer some impressive specs like 5x optical zoom lens that makes a big difference whether you are shooting photos or recording video. Unfortunately, it has smaller sensors with fewer megapixels than any other Pixel 9 phone. Between the Tensor G4 and all the RAM, the Pixel 9 Pro 4 chugs along nicely. The phone may be underpowered compared to the Galaxy Z Fold 6 or latest iPhone model, but Google relies on its cloud and its specialized processor for so many of its AI talks that it hardly matters. So what if the Pro Fold takes a bit longer to make photo edits? It's making magic. In all seriousness, I am worried about the long-term viability of this chipset since Google is promising that the Pixel 9 Pro Fold will get Android OS updates for the next 7 years. Google is making three big claims about the Pixel 9 Pro Fold design. This is the thinnest foldable phone you can buy. The inside screen is biggest display ever packed into a phone. This is also the most durable foldable Pixel phone yet. At least one of those claims seems highly suspect. When I showed the Pixel 9 Pro Fold to iPhone toting friends and family, they are all amazed without fail. It's the first foldable that looks normal, they all said. How normal? It isn't just that the front is the exact same size and shape as Pixel 9. Being thin helps a lot. The Pixel 9 Pro Fold is so thin that it's less bulky than my iPhone 15 Pro Max if I keep the iPhone in a case. On the other hand, the big cover display means the Pixel 9 Pro Fold has the biggest inner display on any foldable phone, even bigger than the Honor Magic V3 that I can't buy. It has a noticeable bezel but it isn't thick or silly looking, like the pool deck surrounding the original Pixel Fold. The crease on the inner screen is still a crease just as with every foldable phone I have seen. The crease gets less noticeable with every new foldables but it's still there. What can you do? The Pro Fold does have the nicest hinge I have seen with the fewest bits poking through the mechanism. The Pixel 9 Pro Fold has a normal cover display, it's the same display as on the Pixel 9 and sometimes being normal counts for a lot. On affordable phones, it counts every time you don't feel like opening the phone. If the cover display is weird, the phone isn't as fun to use. The Pro Fold cover display is incredibly bright and colorful and I could barely see the difference between these phones and my Pixel 9 Pro. The inner display is like a dream, it's nearly a square, so unfortunately movies don't usually fill the big screen, but videos and shows still look bigger and better inside than out, with pages are much easier to read and navigate, maps are an entirely new world of navigation but photo editing is the star of the show. It's so much easier to edit photos on the big Pixel 9 Pro Fold in a display that I am surprised Google doesn't show every AI demonstration on its foldable. If you are questioning the fun and utility of AI tools before, seeing them on the big display makes things more clear. Whether I am chatting with Gemini, writing an email in Gmail, or adding a Volcano to my photos of Central Park, the Pro Fold is the best Google phone to use by far. 
in bright outdoor light the google pixel 9 pro fold excels i used the phone extensively for photo work in bright sunlight along with all the other major foldable phones for comparison the pro fold cover display was the easiest to see at full brightness and it was the most intelligent when it came to activating the brighter screen modes. When it comes to foldable phone displays, more is better and the Pixel 9 Pro Fold gives you more screen on the outside and inside. Plus, more brightness is the best foldable display I have used among the phones I can buy. The Google Pixel 9 Pro Fold can do everything the other Pixel 9 phones can do and that means a lot of AI. The coolest and most advanced new features are probably the image making tools. You can now create images from scratch with Pixel Studio. There are limits on making images with humans but anything else seems to be fair game. I love the suggestions Google offers in Pixel Studio. The results can be hit or miss but they hit hard when they are on target. Following Google's lead, I made a fake CD, jewel case and all to replicate the on my college a cappella group produced in 90s. It was a total hit on my Facebook wall. I also made some violent images featuring Winnie the Pooh and Mickey Mouse. I have Winnie the Pooh doing drugs with Ewer and Mickey Mouse in images that would be offensive to a number of religious groups. I won't publish them here because they are horrible and there should be no way to easily create them but apparently Google isn't so concerned. We'll see if there are stronger guardrails eventually but at press time this is still possible. Right now it's so easy to make these images I don't even have to say mickey mouse i can just say mickey and get a near perfect result there are also some very powerful image editing tools in google photos on the pixel 9 profile including the new re-imaging tool the possibilities are really endless for this tool but i have a simple concept to highlight below i took a basic set of train tracks that i came across in stamford connecticut i used google photos to remove the tracks and i gave myself a nice pond with a swan as well as an exclusive swimming pool you can see the results below Actually, that's not entirely true. See, the Google photo with the train tracks was also a fake. The original is the plain open field at Fort Stamford. As seen below, I added the train tracks with the reimagined tool. They are so real that Google was able to follow the curve of the hill and Google added the shade from the tree onto the tracks. There's even a random fenced off area I didn't ask Google to make. My point is that this software is very good at what it does. It does a much better job than I ever could have managed using Photoshop. The images it creates are not leveled AI creations in any way. There is no EXIF data. The information that usually identifies the camera and lens used to create a photo. The images are stored as simple JPEG files with a non-descript file name. There is no easy way to know they are fake unless you know they are fake. Honestly, I am tired of litigating AI every time a new phone comes out. Instead, I'll point you to my friends at the Barge who used the reimagine tool to add corpse and potential insurance fraud to photos. You can decide for yourself if this is bad. One of the cool things about the Pixel 9 lineup is the most affordable model has the same cameras as the Pro model. The Pixel 9 has the same 50 megapixel main camera and 48 megapixel ultra wide as the Pixel 9 Pro and Pixel 9 Pro XL. Unfortunately, the Pixel 9 Pro Fold wasn't invited to the party. The Pixel 9 Pro Fold gets a much smaller camera sensor than the Pixel 9, while the Pixel 9 uses a sensor that's around 3 by 4 of an inch diagonally. The Pixel 9 Pro Fold uses a half inch sensor. That's a massive step down. The Galaxy Z Fold 6 gets a sensor that's somewhere in between. This is important because sensor size is the most important factor in a smartphone camera quality. Megapixels hardly matter at all. It's the physical dimensions of the sensor that makes all the differences. The Pixel 9 Pro Fold has a tiny mini sensor. Here are the sub camera samples of Google Pixel 9 Pro Fold.
Take a deep breath. The Tensor G4 chipset is just fine. It isn't the fastest around and it might feel slow sometimes, especially if you try to multitask and run AI tools all at once. Still, there is nothing you can't do on the Pixel 9 Pro Fold. The fastest games run just fine and every app looks great on both the cover display and the inner screen. While the Pixel 9 can feel like a laggard among flagship phones, the Pixel 9 Pro Fold holds its own in the foldable world. The Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 6 uses the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy processor that Qualcomm overclocks just for Samsung, so that's the fastest foldable. The OnePlus Open, on the other hand, uses last year's Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 platform, and in some ways, it's faster than the Pixel's Tensor G4, while in in other ways it isn't. In raw performance, for instance, using Geekbench to test processing power, the Pixel 9 Pro Fold was faster than the OnePlus Open with single-core scores just under 2000 for the Pixel versus just over 1000 for the OnePlus. The Pixel may claim to be twice as fast on paper, at least the Galaxy Z Fold 6 scored around 2200 on the same test. The winner is clear, but the difference isn't so stark. In graphics performance, Samsung's foldable pulls farther ahead. The Pixel 9 Pro Fold managed a decent frame rate of 35.6 FPS on the base mark test, the Expedition. The OnePlus Open managed 38.7 FPS on the same test. The Galaxy Z Fold 6 dominated the pack with a frame rate of 55.9 FPS. Those scores are like the difference between two generations of gaming consoles. I am not worried at all about using the Pixel 9 Pro Fold right now. Its Tensor G4 chipset is perfectly suited for today's Android and all of the today's app. I am a bit more worried about what happens over the next 7 years of Android OS updates as Google adds more and more AI features and relies on the device to run more of the machine learning models. Thankfully, the 16GB of RAM on board should at least keep the Pixel 9 Pro Fold a float longer than most other phones. Google can also offload much of the work to its cloud servers. I have no reason to think the Pro Fold won't last 7 years. I just wish it were a bit faster now at the every start of the race. The Pixel 9 Pro Fold packs the smallest battery of any Pixel 9 phone, even smaller than the base model. It also charges slower than the other recent Pixel phones at only 21W versus 37W on the Pixel 9 Pro XL. Battery life was good, but the other Pixel phones, especially the Pixel 9 Pro XL, lasted longer. Compared to other foldable phones, the Pixel 9 Pro Fold offered just a bit more battery life. The Galaxy Z Fold 6 died a little more than 10.5 hours into our rundown test, while the Pixel 9 Pro Fold instead an hour longer. To compare, the Pixel 9 Pro gave us 13.5 hours of battery life, which is 2 hours longer than the Pro Fold. In my real-world testing, the Pixel 9 Pro Fold lasted all day if I used the big inner display more sparingly. If I used the inner display the majority of the time, I could burn through the battery before dinner. I don't blame the Pro Fold, the display is so big and bright and beautiful, I just had to use it more. That makes me wish the Pixel 9 Pro Fold had much faster charging in addition to having the smallest battery of the Pixel 9 family. The Pro Fold also charges the slowest. The Pixel 9 Pro Fold makes folding phones make sense to me. It's more like a normal phone than ever, but it's also not completely like using a normal phone. By opting for a phone that folds, you are still making trade-offs. Particularly in the camera hardware, the phone's long-term durability is also an unknown. Literally no one has owned a Pixel folding phone for more than a year at this point. Foldable ownership isn't for the faint of heart. But the Pixel 9 Pro Fold is the most rewarding folding phone I have ever used. Using the phone while it's closed feels way less cumbersome and much more normal than the previous Pixel Fold or a Galaxy Z Fold. That makes using the big inner screen feel that much more rewarding. I don't feel like I am putting up with a bulky phone the rest of the time to get the experience. This foldable comes with its trade-offs, the downgraded camera hardware, durability concerns, and oh yeah, 
the 1800 US dollar it costs. But I think Google made the right trade-offs here to optimize the inner screen experience. It's an experience that I'll miss when I switch back to the next slab style phone that I test on that foldable fans and foldable curious will find very rewarding too because goddamn this is a nice phone.